This meeting is now in order. Yeah. Ready? Are we back on? Oh, we're back on. We're back in order. Oh, wow. um, per, it's on. So, um, yeah, I got it. Um, right, you're going to do so it. So, per Mr. Settler's recommendation, I'm going to pull item A off of the agenda. I, I would like to make a motion just on the advice of council to defer item 8A indefinitely uh, and strike it from here moving forward. Okay, that's kind of what I just did. Okay, do, you need a, do, you need, do we need a motion? Uh, no, what's just, the best way to do it? Defer doesn't mean striking. So I'm just removing okay, it from the That's agenda. fine. Okay, so that is it. Yeah. All right. All right. Old business item B, a discussion for ECC interlocal agreement funding compliance. Again, this came up during budget hearing session. Um, I don't think this is something we've really taken a deep dive into yet. Um, and without any objection, I'd like to keep this on the whole business. And so, but I would like to with me so you kind of start diving into this. I know we've had some unexpected things uh, thrown at us. So, second um, that. All right. Well, there's no motion. I'd like to keep it on the whole business. Side. Um, Discussion for resource authority agreement. Mr. Uh, Brown, you'd ask us if you could on this. Are you just something you want to discuss with you on all? No, I'll just like I say, there's there's things that are developing right now. We just need to wait. Oh, I mean, without any objection, we're going to keep that in old business as well. Um, an old item, business item of old business was the EMS long range contract with Western County Properties from the mayor. Um, mm -hmm. County Mayor Labs <coughs> Wednesday sent out a list to the commission with county properties. Was that a comprehensive list of all like properties that we have? Uh, like, can you explain that list? Uh, yeah, that was a list of everything that we have. And you'll see that it may be numbered one, and then there's like five ones. That's all the properties at that location. Like Highway may have several buildings in yeah, one like location. Buildings or yeah. And so that's, that's the list that we have. It's the most comprehensive list right now with finance and risk management. So, is, so this list includes anything that we have insured or anything like that? <coughs> so anything on the, with the property assessor's office, uh, all the county property? A everything that I'm aware of. Okay. And this is just county owned or just county associated? With? Count, so. County owned. And there may be a couple on there that are county associated, like Fort and Fire Department. Uh, I can't remember if that's on there or not. So that would be something that we're kind of uh, contributing money to or insuring or the other? We, we may have assets there. Okay. All right. Is there any? Well, uh, so, but it doesn't. I'll make a motion for discussion. So, uh, second. All right. Second. Thank you, teacher. Any motion? All right. Sorry. Um. Are we done? So, but it doesn't include any any uh, school properties. No. Okay. No and school properties. Can I ask the mayor a question? Sure. Uh, where did this? How did you get this list? This is a compilation from the finance department and risk management. Because I looked through the list and uh, I was just interested to see if there would be something that shows up that is, that's just not listed, you know, on, on here. Not questioning you, but just question, you know, just question the whole process because. Feels like that this should be a little more generalized in public better than just like see a list of county properties, you know, as opposed to just being like under lock and key. So I don't know. I'll be happy to put this on the website. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, there is not a secret document. It's just one that we finally put together, and I'm kind of surprised that it was never put together before. Uh, but uh, I have no problem putting it on the website. It seems odd to it's exactly 50 properties. Exactly. I don't know. It just seems odd. Just something, just, I just ask any questions. It's my job. Well, it's actually 87 properties, but 50 different areas. 50 locations. Yeah. And that, I can't explain that 50 number to you. I apologize. <laughs> so when you say, you said eight properties, you tell like structures. So yeah. eight, you tell like buildings that are yeah. in a, that column. Right. Well, about 85 buildings yeah. on those 50 parcels, so yes. Correct. Okay. Just clarify that. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you meant to say any properties, it's just like that building. Right. 
Okay. Do you have questions for the man or about this property list at this time? All right. Uh, you know, this is under old business, so um, without any objection, we will. Could this be put up? I would like to have this put up because it'd be nice that way if there's something that maybe would be missing that the public would have access to this, not just in buried in some minutes, you know, like but actually where the you can put it on the front page. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the front page is fine. Put it anywhere you want. Would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, that we do have this listed in a very available spot on the county website where the people can just see, you know, when things are sold, when things are not, that they can just see what is kind of property. Second. Motion by Commissioner Keeson, second by Commissioner Keeson, applying to the county building list on property on the website. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And Mr. Sittler. Thank you. Mr. Sittler. I, I, I do have one question. Sure. Some of this is in this is just me being over curious. and in nature, but uh, the audio system on the county building list, is that something that you can see on the county website? Yeah, it's just the occupancy column. Are any of those at issue, like jail storage? Uh, there was something in here about POL stuff. Is there anything in that column that could possibly not want to be distributed in such a manner? I, I, I've noticed that there's one in here copy called a female house. Is that something we need to have public knowledge, common knowledge? A woman's house? A woman's house, yeah. Is that, I, I don't think. Uh, is that part criminals of would certainly want to know where it is. Right. Is that but, part of the uh, home safe that we don't need to Will of this body to put it on the front page of the website, I'll do it. Well, I think we need but to do it within right. reason of redaction. Let's put our, we're, I mean, first and foremost, Mr. Chairman, we're, we're supposed to protect the, the public. I don't think that this, this put a, a home safe address out there is, is really the best interest of protecting the public, and it's sure not the intent. The salt uh, is from the past. past. Uh, would you like to reconsider the uh, okay? Uh, um, move to reconsider. I'd, like, I'd like to mm -hmm. move to reconsider. Why should we have to reconsider? It's, it's, it, I'm sorry, that just got under my skin. This is a legal matter, but why would why would that even be an issue? That, yeah, we'll, we'll put it out there if that's what we want. That, that's just wrong. This is it's a home safe. If this is a home safe and protecting victims, why would we even want it out there? I've been giving them an opportunity to reconsider to undo what we just did to address your concern. I understand, but it's just a matter of which it was presented. Uh, that if that's what the commission wants to do, that's what we'll do. That's not the intent at all, is to put somebody's life in jeopardy. Correct. If you just want to make sure we're clear. The figure of, of what Commissioner Teacher was doing is just trying to be transparent with taxpayers on properties we own, correct? But not put women in, in jeopardy. So here's my recommendation is that if you want to have a motion to reconsider, and then let's keep that under own business, and then if there needs to be a plan for how to profit, work with the law departments on how to properly bless properties if there's something of a sensitive nature. Yes, but can I go further on that? Because it, that brings to mind something. Um, so. I do feel like that the people need to know where everything is, but they don't need to know. I mean, that's a very good point. But the problem is, this is this is already going to be listed. It's already listed out on the website right now. So it's like just. I mean, we need to. We need, when we're redacting, or when, if we redact things, we need to remember that it's already. It's. I mean, because county mayor provided it, so it's already. Uh, I'm thankful you know, it's, 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 it's a matter of a matter of public record. This public county mayor emailed into our county last week. Yeah. Uh, it was put on the legislative agenda, so it's on the county website right now. Yeah, and, so, and, and it's going to be in the minutes. So, that, like, there's, it's many places already. So we need to figure out how to move forward if we're going to do that, as opposed to just getting worried about it being okay. Well, if we put it one more of the four places that it already is, you know. I'll ask the law, since the law director brought this up, and I'm going to have to revert back to you on this kind of work. Yeah. Since this is again, the county yeah. mayor emailed this list out to the county if the, these are sensitive issues and it's already in a, a public. Email. That that's fine. I don't know what's sensitive or not sensitive because I just took a cursory glance at this section. I was merely posing that as a question, but just because it's public record and it can be obtained by the public doesn't mean we need to be just willy-nilly posting everything because we know they can get it through the public. If they want to make a records request, by all means, I'll submit uh, information with whatever they request. It was just a matter of all of a sudden it's hitting a public domain 
purview, and I just saw stuff like POL and and the stuff about the jail, and it just caused me to wonder if there's anything here that you ought to be concerned about. And I'm thinking worst case scenario, somebody knows where your POL's at, they know where to go if they want to steal fuel and things of that nature, or if they're planning the big breakout from the jail, they know a, the location of all the services that are rendered within that. So it's it's worst case scenario with that. But it's it's up to you all. It is obtainable through an FOI, but how much do you want to just voluntarily be putting up? Well, what are we doing at this point? I mean, because right now we're discussing it. It's in the minutes for this meeting. It's public record. It's on the agenda, and it's been sent to all the county emails. So what, like what, what, I mean, I, I don't want to go any further than that, but what do we do to protect the people if we're really worried about it? Let's, I mean, I mean that would be a question for the I'm not sure. What do we do in that situation? Uh, is there a way to redact it from public records that's already in the minutes? If, this information here is obtainable. Right. I'm not disputing that fact. And maybe this is me using this as a cautionary tale for future stuff that happens to hit uh, agenda packets and things of that nature. It doesn't happen very often, but just how do you want to proceed from this point forward if everybody's okay with the way this one's laying? I think the what we're trying to get to is, is let's not just flash it out there. Hey, we've got it. <laughs> I mean, at least with this way, the way it sits now is there has to be an effort made to obtain it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we just need to go out there and put it on the front page, uh, saying that that's what was going to do. I was under the assumption, and again, I you know what happens when you do that, but. I was under the assumption that the, that the redaction would take place, uh, but if that's not the case, then I would make the motion to reconsider uh, to, to bring this back and, and roll it a month or something to to make sure that we've got the redactions in there. Yeah, the motion to reconsider the quarter. Second. I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Brown. <coughs> before we vote, I mean, we Commissioner Brown will be the queue before we vote. Thank you. We can simply remove the icon when he calls. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody knows there are properties. They don't know what happens if those properties are in the salt shaft or the country. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. I want to you Mr. Rock. I move to approve this with the removal of the occupancy cost. That was second. Second by Commissioner. Uh, I make a motion. I make an amendment. I want to make an amendment to that motion. Okay. Well, that we go back and redact the occupancy column from the minutes um, for this meeting and from the agenda for this meeting. Can we can we go back and do that? Sorry, yeah. public. Yeah. Okay. I withdraw my amendment. Uh, we've got a motion on the floor. We've got a second. All favor say aye. All right. All those kids. Now, on to new business. Veteran Service Report. Uh, uh, Veteran Service Direction. So, uh, your report is in your packet. Um, item B is a resolution that is a records inspection appointment. Uh, obviously, it's a uh, water records office. So I don't know if you guys have any comments on that. Um, the law director or our staff attorney on this. If you guys have any questions, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Show. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Is there any discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. I right, see it's a resolution for judicial magistrate appointments. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Schoep to approve, second by Commissioner Rogers. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that's all right. It's not really. Well, I was going to ask a question, but it's not really related to this. So. All right. Well, it's not related. We'll go on. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item D, new business discussion for roofing for the Summer County Jail and also a solar panel letter of intent. This came to us from General Operations and uh, asked uh, Commissioner Klein 
to address this because um, first question I guess is the presenters from last week's general office are they here in this meeting at all? No. no. Is any questions? No. There's nobody. So nobody here from last week that came and spoke to the general office. Right. Well, I guess the floor is yours. I'll make I'll make a motion for discussion. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Show. Discussion. All favor say aye. Aye. Uh, four years, Mr. Okay, well, what what we were trying to do in general ops is there's an opportunity to get a new roof with a solar system on a jail for no money. And it, I think it's caused a lot of consternation within the commission because if it feels like it's too good to be true, it probably is. But what I take that back to is when COVID hit and, and the president brought out the PPP program where corporations received hundreds of millions of dollars of money that they didn't have to pay back. That seemed too good to be true. So we, we ripped it up pretty good last week in discussing this letter of intent and our legal counsel has come up with something that is a non-binding letter of intent and the way i would describe this is if one of us was going out to lease a car the leasing company would ask for certain information regarding our rating uh, our bank accounts you know, all the things that a leasing agency would be looking for to justify the lease of the car that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about signing a letter of intent to go the next step for the investors to do their due diligence, see if it makes sense for them. Come up with an organized professional uh, um, contract that we would review, see if, if all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted, and if the commission the entire commission thought it was a good idea to move forward, then we could. And if the commission decided against it, then we walk away, no harm done, no money out of pocket for the county. But there's the potential of saving at a bare minimum $750,000 and at a maximum $4 million for the county uh, taxpayers. And it could, if, if it happened and worked, it could mean tens of millions of dollars or more because, as we know, we've got 80-some buildings that at some point will need to be re-roofed. Plus, there's the ecological aspect of having solar panels that would be warranted, no questions asked, for the next 25 years. And we know what's happening with electricity in this country. There are no coal firing facilities or there are no uh, atomic plants anymore or they're, they're all going away. So what are we going to do about electricity? Well, one way to do it is to have government buildings that are generating their own through solar panels. And you can argue the pros and cons of solar panels, but at this point, we don't have a lot of options as far as a country goes. But if if we can get these installed on that jail roof, which is about 88,000 square feet, and take care of any of the demand on the grid, and not pay a dime for the roof, it just seems to me, I'll sign the document. If, because I'm so certain that after Mr. Sittler got done with it, it's a non-binding document. We should go forward. If we don't do the jail with this, there are other buildings that we possibly could. I know the jail's been a pain for years, should have been re-roofed several years ago, and I know that we're all feeling a sense of urgency, especially in general ops, to get that done. But there is the opportunity that even if we get that roof done and we continue to work on this program, that they would reimburse us the monies we spent on the roof and we would get that roof for free and the solar panels and all of the benefits. What the 
what the investment company, and there are several of them out there, would get is they would get the 30% rebate from the federal government that is part of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. That came into place only in January. They will uh, receive the benefits of the 25%, roughly 25% of generate of the total usage of the police building. And then they would never charge us more than we would have paid gallons of electric. And in, in, in the final documents that would be sussed out in this process, they would tell us what we would be paying, which would be either on par or less money. So I don't see that this, we in any way, shape, or form by signing this letter of intent that we can lose. I, I see that we could have a big game. So that's that's the way I see it. I'll, I'll answer any questions you want. I've got to Commissioner. Uh, so I don't have a problem with the letter of intent as long as it's not binding, but I've got to. You speak up a little bit. Yeah, I said I don't have a problem with the letter of intent as long as it's non binding, but I do have a question about, just because I'm kind of diving in on this on a totally separate thing. Who is responsible for disposal? Disposal. Disposal of, of 20 years down the pipe, or whenever they break. 25. Yeah, who's 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 on the hook for that? Uh, don't know. That would be in the document. It's a letter of intent. So yeah, because I didn't see anything in the in any in anything that was there. Because yeah. my understanding on that is that disposal of that equipment can be uh, because some of it can be considered toxic is non-trivial. And maybe, you know, now look, I, 25 years down the pipe, like maybe it's worth it. I'm not saying it's not. I just, yeah. we would need that. We don't have an answer for it right now. No, and, and part of the deal, as I understand it, is two five year extensions. So that it could be a 35 year. I think that, that's a perfect question for after the due diligence period. And they, they present a proposal to us. Okay. And, and you know what? If that's the only issue and we say, yeah, it's not worth it, then we walk. Okay. Um, I did a question you mentioned, I guess, as part of the inflation and induction tax from the federal government, mm -hmm. right? I guess it's credits. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just another federal thing. It's like, what are the devils in the details of the federal government? They're going to try to put some kind of program in place that you have to adhere to. I mean, are there, I'm not seeing anything as far as there is there any strings of time attached to the federal government in this money as far as like, um, Mrs. Lenahan said that because our, our lease deal is with the investor, their deal is with the federal government. They're on the hook for any of the details. We are not. But the detail, I guess, ultimately would fall on the county, at least in my opinion, of the fact that, um, you know, if we're signing it, ended up, I understand this is kind of a two phase approach. One is just a letter of intent just to explore, correct? I mean, exactly. No commitment, just a letter to explore. Exactly. To come back with information to then look at all the details that right. matter for the public. Right. Okay. So, so I'm just getting beyond the letter of intent. I guess that would be a, a question is to make sure just because another entity, that the federal government's going to send them to something, I mean, ultimately I believe that we would be held to it by default. I mean, I, I'd have a hard time believing that would be the case if that's just me. But uh, uh, Mr. Tilly, you did send out an email on the 10th um, that had feedback from uh, Mr. Lawing, the finance director, on this letter of intent. I have a copy as well. Okay, we you like to pass that on. You did send that to the entire commission, yes. but there, I, 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 you sent a word document, a statement of intent. It was pretty limited, but I, I think two things that the finance director called out was one, um, that their letter of intent was like, hey, we're not going to talk to anybody else, but state law allows for, I don't know, allows or requires that even, even if it's a lease situation, that we would be able to um, still bid that out, so we wouldn't be beholden to what's written there in my you, You're referring to their statement of intent? Correct. Which is, that is, and that has been removed. Oh, yeah. That was his, what Mr. Lawing. Yeah, I've sat down at length with Mr. Lawing on this because there's a bunch of other issues, but they really aren't uh, 
worth delving into until we get something properly put in front of us. Was what you sent in this email, was that their original letter of intent? I, I don't, I do not recall. Okay. Um, so that has been removed as far as what Mr. Long's concern was on that. Like, we're not going to be beholden to you for another of intent. At least it's all available according to. Correct. I and, and I actually went in and made them uh, understand that any provision or any outlying lease or further contracts that were executed, all state statutes would have to be complied with, anticipated or unanticipated, because this isn't as simple as us signing off. There are some serious state hoops to jump through that we don't know what category this falls under. So if this statement of intent, I only did this so that it could move to a process where we could finally start dissecting something. Sure, because sure. it's all been a bunch of back and forth. Any, this, this letter of intent, phase one, should it exploratory happen, should you get to phase two, which is another resolution to actually approve any kind of lease agreement, that would be still subject to state approval, yes. uh, all that, the process. Um, this in, initial request that came from general office, just to make sure we're understanding, this is simply to, to enter into a intent to move forward as an exploratory, but with no commitment, nothing, it's just phase one, it's, it's a check and balance. You'd have to basically come back to the commission for, for lack of better words, a second reading on the details of everything to be fully debated in this thing. This, the, the intent of this is through our conversation at that meeting, it was at 10 ops, I believe. Mm -hmm. During that whole debate, everything kept coming back to, we've got to see your utility bills before she could really firm up and, and give us a solid response on anything. This is basically saying, okay, we're giving you permission to go research those utility bills and then give us a real proposal. Okay. So this and, is and that we can entertain and either say yes, no, and this went even further to say, if for some reason we went on, you're bound to the statutes of the state. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, yeah, at the very end of the first paragraph, everything in this is at customer's discretion, us being the customer. Anything we do is at our discretion. So. The options, if I'm understanding this, to explain it to the uh, public, and I see Commissioner Jones, I expect you, um, is one, the first thing that came to the lots was a, basically a $1.9 million dollar bid for or estimates for the brief. Correct? That was that, where we, That's what I believe the consultant that is looked at the room recommended a $1.9 million dollar. was thinking it would be in that or and then the second thing that was in this packet um, that I read through was looks like if I'm comparing apple to apple, comparing that wrong. From the presenters last week, the other uh, roofing company, mm -hmm. it's close to a little less than eight hundred thousand dollars. So you've got one bid for one point nine or estimate, and you got one for eight hundred thousand. That's yeah. a, you know a one point one million dollar. Are we talking about? Is this a true apple for that conventional quote? When all the solar, is that an apple to apple comparison? I understand that the 1.9 is an architectural estimate. The 800,000 or slightly less than that is an actual proposal. Okay, so the, but the um, architectural estimate, I mean, what is the, the fee the architect gives to and how much money they make on the project? I think it's six percent, isn't that by Tennessee statute? I'd have to check and say I think so. I think the job. I believe that's what the state part of that fee structure that that's part of the one point nine million. That's no, it's not part of it, it's on top of the one point nine. Oh, so the uh, yeah. Yeah, two something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's 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 what we're getting. So but as far as so we don't know what's being proposed for 1.9, but this roof we have is basically, can you explain the conventional, uh, outside of the solar panel, which we know is free? They basically, the, the architect came up with a set of specifications that I don't believe are locked in yet, but they're very close. And we, we have on that roof what's called an EPBM, which is a sheet rubber roof. And what, what the architect and the 
the roofer who was here in the audience last week were proposing was the same thing. It was called it, it's called a wet suit system. It's the same material. done in a 0.45 mil thickness and that will give you the 25 year uh, life expectancy that they're talking about in the solar panel roofing costs the county no money. Well, no, set aside the solar panels. Okay. I'm yeah. just only talking about just the roof. The, roof, yeah. the conventional roof that we have for the 1.9 million plus yeah, because the architects said it would be versus then you had another uh, mover. I think he, he said he was an engineer as well. Yeah, he, he, he went to school as a structural engineer. I, I know that personally because he did a book for me a few years back. Okay, so this roofer, he has given an actual proposal for the actual materials and cost and labor. Yeah, and it's kind of, you know, less than $800,000. Yeah, including I'm frames and everything. It was like $800,000 right now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's, that's fair. So, again, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Just, Taking the solar panel away, just conventional apples and apples, I mean, that's still like a 1.1 1 .1 plus million dollar swing. Yeah, uh, yeah but that's, that's, just, that's, that's a pretty in building, just, just in, in, in development, you see that though. You, depending on the time of the world, you can see prices that are three times more than another one just because it's basically, this is, I don't want to do the job, but if you give me this money, I'll take it. Mr. Um, I said, I'm fine with this. I just, Forgive me if I missed any language, but I would, and maybe I, I think I'm going to make an amendment, suggest an amendment here. But I'd just like it to be really called out that this is not, that this is non-binding. So, for consideration, I consider the following: investor understands that this LOI is non-binding and that customer is under no obligation to make any purchase transfer or enter into any further, any further agreement utilize the equipment and or services as outlined by investors proposal uh, or proposals pursuant to this agreement. Did you write that agreement? I just wrote it. Okay, I just took it up. No, 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 I just, I just wrote it because I, I mean, is there any, does that hurt anything? I mean, well, it just makes, I want it super clear. The way I understood the discussion was if we do agree with it, we've got to give in to whoever they decide to use as far as fulfilling the project. Yeah, but it, but this is just this is just an agreement to so get a proposal. This get is a proposal. an agreement to get an agreement. It's an agreement, and that's what I'm saying there is that just because they give us an agreement, we are under no obligation to accept it. I, well, we're not. I don't the, see it. I don't see that called out. It. Well, it just says a customer's discretion, and, and legally, discretion means it's at that person's soul. Uh, it's that sole decision of that person. And another thing to keep in mind here is even if we reach a happy medium with them, we still think, as far as me and Mr. Long, that this is going to end up being a biddable thing anyway. Now, I just don't see a definitive statement. Where are you? Where are you missing? Maybe I missed it on the. End of the first uh, At customer's discretion. Okay, I see. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I would, if this was, I mean, I'd do some contracting, I would want that, I'd want that phrase in there, just because it makes it, like, super clear, we're under no obligation. I, some, I would yeah, like to make that amendment. Table, we've got a second. I'll second it. Um, I know Commissioner Jones had a question. I didn't have a question, I was trying to answer the question about, um, they did address that um, because of the amount of um, precious material in this for conductors. I mean, semiconductors in there and everything. Um, getting rid of them would not be a problem. People probably would really want the scrap material. But if this project works like they think it will, they'll probably want to keep going on with the program and replace them as needed. They're making money off of us because of the sheer amount of energy that jail draws. We're paying our bill to them 25% of the power uses. They normally don't do this buying the roof project to add solar panels to. They usually just do the solar panels. But it's worth it because of the sheer volume of energy that, that jail uses, that they're jumping at the chance to 
for us to pay a quarter of our bill to them. That's why they want to see if it's profitable and look at our utilities to see if it's worth it for them to do this. I just want to clear that up because I understood it pretty well from uh, Melody Miles when we come. I have a question about the energy that with solar panels. Um, just, uh, I know that people sell energy to actually utilities companies. Do they not do that? Do you know, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, that's why they're only able to do 25% of the total. We would never have enough excess electricity to sell that to the, to the uh, utility company, is, was the answer to that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, go ahead. So, just for clarification on this, um, if you go one, two, three, four, the fourth paragraph down, just really just two, uh, just really one long sentence. Unless required to disclose pursuant to the, the FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, or federal or state law, customer this part, customer agrees to keep and treat the specific terms and conditions contained in this proposal on a confidential basis. How do we do that when we're working for the public with the public? Like we're going to discuss in the book. You're quite, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. That's that's the reason for the first part of that sentence. So okay, so but it's so basically, the kind of what you're saying at the customer okay. discretion, which means we're going to do what we want to past that period <coughs> because we're required to. And you're saying federal and state law. I get it. So the commissioner shows he wants to see that in there as far as the amendment says thought out. I like that as well. I want to see that in writing or anything else that we can include that on if we do want to move forward with this. Just a this is a, a lease. This is a lease. Now, is there an option to buy, or do we always just really want to keep this kind of thing to them, where they will do the maintenance, that kind of thing? At the end, I, I, I mean, that's the way I would look at this. At, this is is at the end of 25 of years, now. we get the car. Oh, and clear. Yeah. So, so it's ours. Yeah. At, at the end of 25 well, years. And like I said, there are two five-year options to keep them on to take it to 35 years. So, and, and, and as uh, Tim just said, the, the equipment, even after 25 years, will be probably that much more valuable if we wanted to scrap it. They are saying that we would have no problem getting some scrap. I don't see how any of that. Any of that value on 25 years, especially if we're using them. I don't know. So I really see the silver, the silicone in it, and that kind of thing. Okay, you got the price. Yes, the price is my best. But the thing is, technology is really still not there yet to do the recycling. That's the biggest problem. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, this is one committee I do get to vote on, and uh, this may be more innocent. And first of all, I'd like to say I commend um, the Chairman of General Operations because he's been a true servant of this county. He's climbed around on more roofs and uh, <laughs> saved us money, uh, unbelievable amount of money. But I'm very conflicted about this uh, entire thing. Uh, even if I were to vote for this, I'm not sure I could vote for this other agreement. Uh, I'd, I'd feel better if it didn't originate with Joe Biden, but the fact that the, the origin of it, I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I didn't like what I heard. I didn't like uh, the fact that uh, the corporation, you know, was situated in Brazil. Uh, there are Chinese connections with Brazil. I, I don't know. I'm just very conflicted about it, and my vote is going to be no. If, if for this letter of intent. Yes. So I'm, I'm glad you said that, but my one question that, I, that I've been worried about is, so you know how property tax, like the way that it gets the American people into the government, practically on everybody's property in some form or fashion. Uh, we can go down that whole road. What I worry about is if we're leasing this roof to a county building, where do we go 
that? Like how, how, that's what my concern is about the federal government. Like what do they, what do they get to install on there? What do they get to own on that? Because if they're releasing it, they own part of that. So how does that look? Mr. Holmes. Well, they'll all be determined in the due diligence and with respect to Chairman Pius. As I understand it, when they pro when they deliver a proposal, we can say we don't want anything that's made that comes from China or anything else. And if we don't like the deal, we won't. I, I don't here again I don't see how we can get hurt. So these the leaks I guess that are happening at the jail, are they going into inmate living quarters? Are they running down towers and everything else at the jail? Mr. Mayor, I will tell you that we just had a report leak, uh, a leak of report today that's gone through the duct work. So I have comfort air, I'm going to have to go out tomorrow, replace duct work, and then fix that leak. Just so I can get in the logistics side frame, if if we go through this, we do the letter of intent, we're three and four or five months down the road, we still don't have any duck work fixed. And we're still going on another year. Um I think we're just really to all due respect, I think we're spinning our wheels. Uh we just need to get the roof fixed. And and my question still remains is does the roof at the jail can it does it can it hold the solar panels? Does it have the engineering to hold them? They're they, they, they lease, the lease the leasing company, the investor. They part of their deal is they they do whatever they need to to get the structural engineering looked at. Now, sweetheart deal sounds like well, it 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 does and. The thing is, and I said this at the very beginning, is it is possible that we can go ahead and get the roof done. And if we if we still sign the letter of intent, do our due diligence, said, you know, we, we should take this deal, there is a good chance that they will reimburse us for the roofing money that we spent on the roof. So we don't, I guess what I'm saying is we can get our cake and eat it too here. We can get the roof done, Satisfy all the concerns with with uh, the sheriff's department and the mayor, and then if we liked what we saw in the proposal that, that they handed us, then then they reimburse us for the roof. I mean, somebody's they, they would pay for the roof. You're shaking your head, and I don't understand why. I just thought process. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. You were shaking no. So here again. This, we can do the roof now, and I'm not absolutely certain about this because I don't know that much about it. I know the letter of intent is doing the due diligence, and as a former builder, we did this kind of stuff all the time. And then, you know, if we do the roof right now, which we can do right now, and they come back and they say, we'll reimburse you for the roof, we'll put up the solar panels, we'll take care of all the structural needs from the underside or it doesn't need any, whatever the answer is and then we either say yes or we say no it's you know it's it's, it's that simple it's just the letter of intent that holds us in the letter of intent and i just want to be super clear so we can pursue fixing because that was my question was on these lines like how long are we going to go here like so we can pursue this is not this is a parallel path we can pursue fixing the roof totally decoupled from this. That's, that's what Melanie Lanahan has explained okay. to me. Okay. Um, and I call, so, oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll just get back to that. It seems like it, so if we fix the roof, then again, are we going back towards a bid issue, a bid process, so we're still waiting for the bid process to go through? I mean, it, again, I, I'll just have to side with Chairman Hyde. I'm sad about that. Was it so we're on just running in now. Yeah. Um, Mr. Jones. They're also ready to fix the roof as soon as we say go. So that would be the fastest route. If we got through the letter of intent portion of it, they are ready to fix the roof for free. And all 
concerned about where it's made or where the company is. This is a multinational conglomerate investment firm that is going to buy the best equipment they can for profiting off of this investment. They don't care where it's from. We're not buying it. We shouldn't care where it's from. If it breaks down, it's cheap junk. They're going to lose money. They're not going to buy cheap junk. They're going to buy the best solar panels they can have to make the most money that they can. And most of the solar panel material comes from China. We're not going to get around that, folks. These are things that you, you're not going to Walmart looking for something made in the USA. This is an investment firm that knows what they're doing and they're buying the best equipment to profit. We can't get hung up over that. And they're only looking for 25 this years. This is their stuff on our roof. So you got a motion on the floor in a minute. So um, is there any more discussion on the amendment of the construction language before we have one question? Mr. Sittler, is that redundant? What what Commissioner Schultz is suggesting, is that redundant to your document? I, I can overkill it. I, I think mine satisfies everyone's intent, but I'll put that in there. It, won't it hurt doesn't hurt anything. Okay. It won't hurt my feelings if you say yes. Yeah, um, investor understands that this LOI is non-binding and that customer is under no obligation to make any purchase, transfer, or other agreement to utilize the equipment and or services as outlined by investor's proposal or proposals pursuant to this agreement. Can you give a second? I was just saying, and I would... Would you recommend we put that at the end of the first paragraph? Uh, I was going to put it at the end. Well, that's a good question. So My suggestion is the very last statement. The very last statement, last statement. okay. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good. good. All right, so that was the intent. That's, uh, that's the motion on the floor. The property is second. Uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Uh, oh, well, okay, so I'll change my. Okay, that is a good, good point. Uh, I'm going to call it SOI, statement of intent. That's the letter. For the, for the amendments. Because, All goes out. Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Right, now we're back to the main motion, which is discussion on this agenda item. Um, I guess I do share some concerns. That's why I'm asking about the. I'm just looking at the conventional quote for the conventional route that is roughly you know, $770,000. Versus the $1.9 million plus. Um, that's just a crazy story. Again, I, I understand people, you know, contractors every day triple and quadruple bid things. Just it's the, I don't want to deal with you if you want to pay me, then I'm going to make a good profit. It's a profit. I understand it happens every day in the building. So, um, people are building. So, I mean, is there, so you're saying, I get the commission went forward with a conventional route option? Mm -hmm. To go ahead and do that now. Since I mean, we, we need to do something. We, we still have to finish the specifications with his architect, and that architect will still require a fee. Even on the low even, even on even on that one, yes. Yeah, the, they're separate. Yeah, this is this is just for the solar panel. No, this no. is just for a room. Oh, in, in, in the packet on but I'm, I'm speaking to no, 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 but I'm, I'm talking about the actual, but if the motion that's on the table is just for well, the letter of table yeah. discussion. discussion. We're on discussion. There's been no motion. Ah, uh, okay. We're got it, discussion. got it. That's Sorry. our main motion. Fair enough. So, um, that's why I'm getting back to trying to understand, I mean, that three route that, that is benefited taxpayers, but again, it sounds, well, everything comes to sound too good of a truth. I've got no dodge in this hunt, except uh, to say exactly, that but I just, and understandable, but it's obviously people, it's, it's questionable technology, solar panels, federal government, you know, it, there are concerns there, investors, something leasing, like is there, have there been any other counties that are doing something like this or were um, on any county? Yes. Yeah. Williamson or Wilson County School? Williamson, I believe. Williamson County School for that. And the, the, the amount of energy that they use is so far less than our tail. They jumped all of that when they saw our tail. 
they want it because the long-term investment is there. So Williamson County has already done something like this with these people. So. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a, well, I'm saying think the best way to do it, because I've got two uh, motions I'd like to make, but I'll make one and then we'll get past it. you want to say something before you make it? Oh, go ahead. Let's the water that you're saying. Sure. Mr. Long and I have researched this as well because this was brought up, which has brought up some other issues about leases versus purchase versus uh, interest on the note and if this falls into a grant category so I need you all to understand even if we get past this this is not going to be a one month we sign the next month we're building okay having said that Williamson County has used this on a school the project and scope of that school has uh, was not I don't know how to phrase this without getting somebody in trouble, but it never hit the radar of the state because the state kept telling us nobody's doing this. And then this kept coming back as, uh, well, these schools are using it. This is what they're saying, saving on this. So our project is so large, we've got to go to the state and just throw it all out there and say, here's what we're going to do. But that's how it was left with us, and we have not gotten any further than that because it turned into a he said, she said about what the contract could say, and we finally decided we get this this uh, intent letter out, we actually look at something in black and white, and then we start making a game plan. It's the whole thing. So I, with that in mind, um, the intent of what I'm going to propose here is to move forward with uh, any proposals and discovery relevant to just fixing the roof independent of the solar panel um, and also to approve the uh, letter of intent. But because it, these things probably need to be separated out, I would just like to do the first one first, which is to just make a motion to move forward with uh, discovery relevant to fixing the roof, so, independent. So with, okay. with conventional. With conventional and independent of solar panels. Uh, we've got a motion by Commissioner Show, a second by Commissioner Brown. Um, discussion on that, I, I guess the question is with, I mean, I'm looking at saving the taxpayer $1.1 million with what's in this packet for a conventional roof. Now, is this for making this motion is this just to fix the past lease or just to replace the entire the, roof the, the full the full packet okay and it's not a replacement of the well, entire roof it's the, the lower roof about eighty-eight thousand square feet would be would have that uh, wet suit system on it the upper tower needs to be totally replaced the insulation and all okay so and so it but it when i say the entire roof the entire roof of the jail the tower it's all going to be addressed Right, the, right. The project, the whole yeah, scope okay. of the project and, and addresses that, the whole roof. And just understand that there's no turning back on the argument, on the architect. Once John gets them to go ahead, then we're stuck with that six percent. That that was what we were trying. But I, I'm cool with that. But that's we need to get the roof fixed. I know, but that right. is according to state law. That, I mean, that, that's a stand. Yeah, I mean, that, and I understand the protections there, and I'll just understand how it's going to be as well. So I think that's the point of contention in that process. But I mean, it, the point is, there's a big difference. I mean, I'm comfortable with moving forward with the conventional. I mean, I think we all agree, but we need to get this done. Yeah, yeah I don't want to delay that. Yeah, we so, do. Um, and so. So the motion is moving forward with a conventional estimate right. here in the packet for the lower, the wet suit, the upper total place. And Correct. That's around 770. Uh, in, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, right now. Depending on who you talk to. Yeah. So do we need to do a um, question? If we need to send us the budget next month, we will review. It should already be on. Yeah, we, we've got it appropriated. Yeah, not to. Okay, that's yeah, right. It's already appropriated. It's 1.45. Okay. Yeah, we have now. So, well, let, let me explain something. There's two different projects here. Uh, you have one that's recommended by the architect, the, the one that, that scoped out this project, said what we need to do, we need to remove layers and, and do it under this standard. Then you have Root Connect, who has a different method, uh, the way that they want to do it. Uh, now, 
from what my discussions with, with the architect that we have on board is that this may not be up to the standards that we would want it to be. Uh, it's built more for what they want to do with the solar. So we need to make that decision. Are you going to scope it this way? Because whatever the architect, he just does an estimate. It still has to go out to bid. Uh, it'd be a sealed bid, and, and that whoever wins that bid wins that bid. Uh, but we do have to scope it out. And if we hire this architect, we need to scope it out to their specs. Uh, because that's what we hired them for. So what is the option of uh, looking at different architects? Or is there a different architect? Is there a process of two different architects? Well, well I, I guess it's, I get or opinion? I mean, well, it's different. It's difficult to say, okay, we're going to hire this architect. We want you to give us this opinion. Uh, you don't want to hire an architect to give you your opinion. So you want one that goes out and does a full inspection of the roof, runs the test, and then they come up with what they feel is the best options to go forward, and then we pick from those options. Okay, and can you give us two options? So, so the architect is just looking at fixing the roof, period. He's not looking at the add-on of the solar panels, which is you know, you're going to start with. Oh, oh, we have, holes into your roof after you Yeah, we haven't it discussed on. that with the architect mm -hmm. because we haven't gotten that far. Yeah. I mean, you're making 6%. I mean, my opinion, that. The mayor is correct. The specification will be the specification. It will go out to bid. And if it's a competitive bid and you get three or four or five bidders, you should get the best price based on that specification. All things being equal, they should all be bidding out for Apple. This may be, a, I'm kind of tossing this around. This may be kind of a dumb idea, but could we put both options out to bid? Uh, yeah. And we could then we'd have a menu I mean, of stuff have, to choose from. Yeah, yeah, we that's can. What I was, I was yeah, that's that's a bit cumbersome, but I'm sure we'll put it here. I mean, uh, that would be a Mr. Long question. I don't know. If we put yeah, separate bids out. We might have to get his yeah, weigh in on that. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I do want to qualify my statement that I, I run all of that. I don't know. I genuinely don't know either. <laughs> and he's the one that's going to be cutting the check. So, yeah, I I don't know. I, I feel like that might be wasteful if we. I love the idea of options, but if we're if we're having an architect draw up options for bids to come in for one option that is going to be dead in the water, one of the two. You know, we won't go with both, probably. So it seems like it might be odd. But I, I do have a, a, a few questions about this uh, based on Mr. Hyde or Mr. Klein. Would you maybe, I know that I'm not the only one that is curious about the Brazilian and the Chinese uh, statement. But I just want to see kind of like what what ties, because uh, I think that's super important to the folks that out here that employ us. So. Well, when we were talking about this uh, the other evening, uh, Commissioner Miller and I were sitting here at the uh, table Googling, and uh, actually she found it before I did. Uh, that I think it was the corporation, the investors, was it not, uh, that were the ones who were investing in this, uh, were located in Brazil. Can we, can we? That that is one of your BRICS countries: Brazil, Russia, India, China, South America. Those, those are BRICS, and they're trying to depose the United States. Point of order, and I'm not trying to. I mean, the point is we're we're on the conventional roof at this point, not the not the solar. Part. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to try to keep us. Yeah. 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 It's not talking about conventional. True, but aren't we still? Uh, uh, no, we're not. We're talking about the conventional. Just roof. Just the conventional the, roof. The, that the is original right. motion, though. It's we're not over original motion. Yeah. 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 Just right. right now. So, we're only talking conventional. But we were talking about bidding out the solar panels. 
No, we are. We no, we were not. We were talking about dismissing them. I think we were talking about suspecting yeah. yeah. conventional ones. Yeah. Now, the, the only thing that we could do, and it feels very cumbersome at this point, is talk to the architect if he even knows what would be required of the solar structure. And I, I don't think he could be. I'm, again, I want to. Bring this back in that order. Let's well, no, but this is for the point. specifications. Commissioner uh, Rogers, you can say. Would we not? I mean, if we're going to fix it, we're going to have a few on a, a hefty note after all. Would we not want to go ahead and have all the mold junk removed and all the uh, stuff that's been wet? Now we're down in the HVAC units getting wet. Um, get all the mold contributing factors out. Conventional idea that we already have with this company, or I know nothing about the duct work that they're talking about. It's new. Is this just the first time? Yeah, this just came in. Today. Okay, this is the first time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. It's a new, you're asking about something we just found out, I guess. So. Well, yeah, but I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to say if we're trying to get an idea of the scope and who's going to reimburse them. I mean, it seems like we're down in the weeds and wishing for a lot when we don't really know a lot. And we. Well, right now, already been a, right now we're, we're not talking about solar panels. We're talking about a potential roof. Commissioner, you show has the motion on the floor. And you tear it. Yeah, and, and there are two. Let's get back to here. There are two options. The way I'm looking at this, and I just want to make sure I'm not losing anything. We've got two options. We got the partial replacement and the buttressing with the wetsuit versus total replacement. No, it, no. It, it, it's one system. It's all one. Yeah, it, it's just partial roof replacement. Okay, so we're not we're not halfway fixing enough parts. It was done in sections. Okay. So this is only fixing sections. So what was the point? I'm, and I guess I missed your point earlier about the two different. There's two different ways of fixing the roof. That's why you have a difference in price because you're using two different products. Okay. So that's well, I mean, that's that can all come out. That can all come out during the bid and process. That, can all that all comes out during the bid process. The okay, I got it. We got, got a motion on the floor to move forward with the bidding process. Yes. Yeah. And we have a second. Is there any more discussion on this? Mr. Chairman. It's just it, relative to it is, it is relative, but I, I, I have to just make a point. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But the, the reason that we've been talking about the specs for the solar panels is just simply because Commissioner Show brought up having a smorgasbord of options. And so that's the reason why we're still talking about it. So I don't think it's out of order to talk more about the solar panels in you know, the options. You're, you're out of order because he was talking about the options for conventional only, not the solar panels. Uh, that's, that's not what I heard. Then that, that was his motion. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's, that's right. I, mean, I, so. I understand that argument there, but I mean, that's where we are. We are. I, I, just, I, just, I mean, just, I just, I drink this. So, yeah, you are. So, any other questions on Commissioner Shope's motion to move forward with the conventional bidding process for the fix and replace this All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Set. So, I'd like to get back in here. Now we can talk about solar panels and China and the bricks. Uh, because what I'm going to do here is make a motion to approve with the amended, the amended version of this statement of intent. I'll second. So, motion made by Commissioner Shoke to move forward with the letter of intent with amendments. Or statement of intent is second by Commissioner Klein. Is there any discussion? Oh, Commissioner Teasley. So, are there any American investment companies that we can go with instead of, is there another option for that? I'm sure there is. Authority. We don't own the route. This company, whoever the company is, whoever the investors are, they own that roof on top of that chair. That bothers me really, really interesting. Out of all places to own a roof. Here. Let them all out. They can't take it away. They can't take it away. They can't take it away. Mr. Teacher, tell the floor. So keep on the floor. Sorry. It does bother me, though. It's just because. I mean, at least I know that we at least will own that roof, but eventually it's a problem for the taxpayer. I mean, it just, I, I love the, I love the not spending the taxpayer's money, but if we, if we're digging a bigger home for them, it scares me to death. Why the bigger home? The bigger home. Um, 
Well, I, I'm not supposed to address the, the crowd. No, you're not. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 and my, my worry, my concern is that if we are, if we are, if we are putting forth an obligation to the for the taxpayers and the taxpayers' children and grandchildren that we are unaware of. I know that we're in this letter of intent, but it worries me because we, we cannot be speaking and spending. We're, we're saying, well, we're saving you money, that's what we're doing, but then all of a sudden, we've got a Brazilian owned Chinese company uh, and, you know, that owns the jail. Uh, yeah, that owns, that owns the roof of the jail. I mean, it's like we need to replace the roof, but then if we don't even own it, so just, it, there's a lot of issues. Mr. Chairman, I got pertinent information on this side here. They're not from Brazil. I'm talking to the lady right now. They're from Sweden. It's a neutral country. Hold on. Commissioner Jones, thank you. You gained that recognition of the fourth place next time for in Russia. There is a difference between Sweden and China and Brazil. So I will we'll recognize that point, but we're digressing. We need to wrap this meeting up. And I wanted to wrap it up. We're not talking about hiring company from anywhere right now. We're talking about a letter of intent to find out what we can and won't do. Correct. So what, at the end of the day, we can decide to not do it. So what, what Commissioner Shove has made a motion has been seconded by you is to move forward with a letter of intent in parallel to the conventional roof bidding process. So that, and it's nothing, it's just to see what options are on the table. Does this, you won't get any of your questions answered until this leaves for right. 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 um, I'm going to go with Commissioner Clyde and then Commissioner Show real quick and Commissioner Rogers. We can be able to wrap it up. That's all I'm taking. So, Commissioner, I mean, uh, hi. Oh, I thought he was first. But anyway, I'll, I'll just, I'll if, you know, if, if I had any question about it, I was going to vote after what I've heard here tonight. It's a for sure no now because we don't know what we're voting on. <laughs> call the question. Is there a second for call the question? Second, that was fine. Questions we called. Uh all those yeah. Uh, 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 in the opposition. All right. Um, we're back to the main motion, which is Commissioner Show's motion to move forward just a letter of intent for exploratory uh, based on the information given last week and this week. So, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Commissioner, uh, no. Hi. And Commissioner Rogers are opposed. Um, all right. So, that, that's, will the, um, this is already in budget, the uh, conventional roof. Our voter intent is now at the law director's office. This will go to the full commission. Uh, for approval for the letter to and I'm sure in a fun manner debated again. Um, and uh, as far as I'll make a motion to approve and approve Second. Uh, the last item from the agenda for all of the certificates of recognitions of proclamations A, a and B. And I have a motion by Commissioner so that second, second, second by Commissioner uh, Rogers. All favor say aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Commissioner Show, second. second by Commissioner Rogers. All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We will be in at 7.05. 7.05.